بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس ویلکم ونس گین ٹو ڈے وی ول ٹاک اباؤٹ اینڈ کمپلیٹ آور ڈسکشن اباؤٹ دا پینل ڈیٹا اف یو ریمبر ان دا پریویس لیکچر آور ٹاک واز گوئنگ اباؤٹ دا پینل ڈیٹا پینل ڈیٹا از از سم تھنگ ڈفرینٹ فرام دا آور پریویس اسٹڈی ان وچ وی موسٹ آف دا ٹائم وی ٹاکڈ اباؤٹ دا ٹائم سیریز آر دا کراس سیکشنل ڈیٹا so what is the panel data panel data is only the combination of cross sectional as well as the time series data so when we combine the data we call it a panel data or pool time series data it has two kinds it is uh, you can say balanced uh, balanced panel data or unbalanced panel data if the observation for all the cross sectional unit and the time series units are equal we call it a balanced uh, panel data and if uh, the observation for any of the you can say the cross sectional unit is different from the other then we say that this is the cross section uh, the this is the unbalanced uh, balanced panel data what is the justification for using the panel data this is very important now almost we are reaching at the end of our destination and you should be aware that every time we should have some justification for doing some of the you can say the task without any justification it is a, you can a bit difficult to justify that we have to have some critical uh, you can say the concrete and solid reason behind using this so why when we say that we are using the panel data we should have an eye on the advantages of the panel data so panel data as compared to the other data uh, uh, simply the time series or the cross sectional uh, data has many more advantages what this advantages us before telling you the advantages let me clear at the outset that i am not saying that the panel data is a panacea to each and every problem of the estimation but i can say that it is more informative and it can provide more insight into the issue as compared to the other data the other data that are the time series and the cross sectional uh, data they are equally important but uh, this you can say this is an improvement or you can say a refine or the, you can say the more uh, better form of the data so what we will discuss as i said panel data uh, uh, discussion is going to be completed today and we will talk about the fem and the rem these are the fixed effect model that we started previously and the other is the random effect model both are used on the panel data both have different scenario different assumption and they have the in some situation they have the no difference between the result but in some uh, under certain assumption you will see that there may be problem of uh, there may be difference of result so starting if you remember we were talking about the different scenarios of the uh, uh, fixed effect model and what you uh, uh, you remember that in the beginning we said that the model was totally restricted model and later we de- we saw that we were uh, lapsing some of the assumption and uh, over time sometime we were saying that the intercept should change sometime we were saying that the other uh, uh, slope should also change so this was the situation now there is a equation but my purpose is just give you some of the you can say the implicit or you can say the explicit uh, information about this no need to worried about this uh, uh, large equation i will explain the third you can say the possibility is that the slope coefficient that you know that are attached with the you can say your variable but the intercept varies over individual as well as time we will still put uh, you can say the suppress the our uh, slope coefficient and we do not allow them to change but now we are changing the intercept not only across cross sectional unit but you can say the individual over time if you look at this this is the it you know i is for the cross sectional t is for the time these are the dummies for you can say if you remember we have three uh, companies or you can the uh, have you know that there were firms so what this means after now look at it we have started using dummies as you know the data was from uh, you say 1935 so we have started using dummy from 35 
and it, this dummy goes up to 53 and interestingly there are 20 observation but you know that we are using 19 uh, dummy variable for this so this is it means we are now allowing the uh, in intercept to change not over time but also on the cross-sectional unit and these are the same your variable and these are the coefficient beta 2 and beta theory here what is the purpose of telling you that we have allowed the intercept terms to change not only on the cross-sectional across the uh, you can say the unit but also across the time suppose when this regression we find the company dummies here you can say these are the company dummies alpha 2 alpha 3 suppose now we are supposing that if this is the situation company dummies as well as the coefficient of the x are individually statistically significant for example we have run this regression by any of the you can say the uh, estimation OLS or whatsoever and we found that this is you can say that these are the significant what will be this mean and interestingly we say that none of the time dummies is significant this is now a bit you can say the uh, change we suppose that when we run the regression our uh, the company dummies become significant that are the alpha 2 alpha 3 but our lambdas you can say this become insignificant what will be you can say we will be concluding result from here we will say the overall conclusion is that emerges that perhaps there is pronounced individual company effect but no time effect because now the company dummies are you can say they are uh, you can say they are uh, significant so they have effect and your time variable uh, time dummies have become in, uh, insignificant we say that they have no effect and what uh, in one other certain what this means the investment function for the four companies are the same except for their intercept what this means investment function of the companies over time of, are uh, the same but as the company dummies are significant we say the managerial system and what kind uh, of uh, which kind of these things these may be different because these are you can say across the unit but over time there you can say the investment function is the same now we go one step further and we say that rather than putting the in a, a restriction on a slope or the intercept what we do all coefficient vary across individual coefficients not only now the uh, slope coefficient but these are you can say the intercept coefficient and they change across time here we assume the intercept and the slope coefficient are different for all individual we can say that these are changed our cross section unit this is to say that the investment function in the previously we said that there is no change in the investment function here you will see that what I am saying that are all different we can easily extend our least care dummy uh, variable model to uh, take care of this situation this is extension of the previous model and you will see that there is some difference between this model and the previous model in the previous model we were still putting restriction on the slope coefficient that they should be the constant but here the situations are very liberal and you can say everything is changing and we are not putting any of the restriction on the variable in the model you look at this here now dummies are changing this is the i go back you will see that there is the dummy no d with the uh, i with the dummies and you can say this is going on on and this is the situation lambdas are changing over time in the model we have introduced the interactive dummies interactive dummies mean that their dummy is also there and you can say the coefficient is there and the variable is also there the interaction between the variable and the dummy and this is captured by you can say this this uh, uh, the coefficient that is the gamma 5 if one or more of the these gammas coefficients statistically significant it will tell us that one or more slope coefficients are different from the group this ka significant a jayega we am bata denge ke it is much different from the other so if there is no difference we will say that this is uh, everything is the same if all the differential intercept and all the differential slope coefficient are statistically significant 
ہر چیز آپ کی سگنفیکنٹ آگئی آپ کے جو ہے وہ انٹرسپٹ ڈمیز اور سلوپ کوفیشنٹ ڈمیز دین دا کنکلوجن اس دیٹ دا انویسٹمنٹ فنکشن آف جنرل موٹر یونائٹیڈ سٹیٹ سٹیل اینڈ ویسٹنگز آر ڈیفرنٹ فرام دیٹ آف جنرل الیکٹر سو ایوری تھنگ اس ڈیفرنٹ ناو وٹ وی آر سینگ دیٹ ایف وی کم ٹو نو دیٹ دس از دا سیچویشن اینڈ دا ڈمیز بیکم سگنیفیکنٹ فار آل وی سی that all the now the investment function that were not changing in the previous now we are seeing, saying that every company has different investment function over time because the dummies have become constant i know that i am skipping many of the detailed uh, discussion but my only purpose is to give to the insight that the dummies can be introduced in many of the ways now again i would like to repeat that the fixed effect model is uh, it can also be called the you can say the least scare dummy variable because if you remember in the previous slide we just kept on introducing the dummies so the fixed effect model and the uh, least scare dummy variables you can say they are the similar things there is no difference so now we are giving uh, you the sum of the caution because every time there is a alarm bell there is a red zone for use of every you can say the method you can't say that this method if we use that you are sleeping and you are saying that this is all okay but it has some of the repercussion using in each and every technique there is some you can say the warning or you can say the point to be considered the first warning is first you can say the question is if we introduce too many dummies variable if you if you see the previous slide look at the dummy it is you can do the mushroom or mushroom of dummies here but it it happens in reality but what will happen here if we introduce too many dummy variable we will run up against the degree of freedom of the problem you know as we introduce more uh, you can say the independent variable whether they are the dummies or they are the other variable the degree of freedom keeps on decreasing that is a very critical because as the degree of freedom is consumed more and more the reliability of the results becomes less and less you can say the uh, reliable and in this way we will see that this is the situation the second is with so many dummies variables in the model there is always the possibility of multicollinearity now this is another problem and you know that as there are so many dummies there is the probability and this probability increases that the variable may become multicollinear with each other so this is and you know this is the problem if multicollinearity enters into your data you can say that it can create many of the problem that needs to be avoided in this way or that way the third caution that is necessary in using the least scare dummy variable is that we can also include such variable as you can say the gender sex color and ethnicity which are time invariant if you are white you will remain white over time if you are black on uh, you uh, you can say there is no possibility that over time this there is change these are some invariant variable and what will happen if we include such kind of variable into the least scare dummy variable technique because an individual sex or uh, color does not change over time so if you are using dummies for this they will become insignificant whether you include it or uh, exclude it because these are the things that are not changing over time and these are very interesting a color a sex of the, if you are female in the beginning the uh, over time you uh, it uh, you are the female over time and ethnicity these things are time invariant hence the if this is the situation least care dummy variable approach may not be able to ad identify the effect of such time variant a uh, in uh, invariant variable who used the uh, least care dummy variable technique that it should capture the effect of these dummy variable but if this is the invariant situation then you can imagine and you can guess that the least care dummy variable technique is unable to capture to detect or measure the effect of such kind of invariant variable so what is the question that if this such kind of variable you should avoid using the least scare dummy variable 
we have to think carefully about the error term every time your whole quantitative technique and particularly regression it depends on the assumption that we make about the uh, the error term again we are conscious about this that we have to think carefully about the error term as our discussion so far is based that error term is normally distributed with zero mean and constant variance. We should see that if we introduce such kind of dummy, will our assumption will be maintained for this situation? Since the I index refers to cross-sectional observation and T to the time series observation, the classical assumption for UIT may have to be modified. Time series may be up here assumption le le te te cross-sectional may be a little bit now there is a combination of I and T I mean cross-sectional T mean time so when there is a combination you uh, you and me will have to modify this because now it is capturing that the error term is now coming from two sides cross-sectional as well as the time series now there are several possibilities about the assumption or you can say the modification of the error term when we are using the panel or the pool time series data. We first possibility is we can assume that the error variance is the same for all cross-sectional unit. We say that error variance is not changing for the cross-sectional unit or we can assume that the error variance is heterosidastic. Hamari marzi hai ke hum jo assumption le le. Homosidastic ka le le, heterosidastic. If homosidastic variance, we say that there is no change of variance across the unit. And if we say that this is uh, uh, the uh, heterosidastic, we are assuming that different, then we will have to change our error time in a different way. For each individual, we can assume that there is no autocorrelation. We are making another assumption that is also about the error term. You know, error term is uh, autocorrelation is a problem related to the uh, error term. So what we say for each individual, we can assume that there is no autocorrelation over time. Thus, for example, we can assume that the error term of the investment function for general motor is non-autocorrelated. New assumption aapne le liya. Same assumption as was the previous one that now we are uh, our the you can say the formulation of the assumption of the error term that are more critical because as the assumption changes the result also changes. So now you are taking this kind of assumption and you are saying that we say that there is no autocorrelation from uh, one of the form to the other. The third possibility could be for a given time it is possible that the error term for general motors is correlated with the error term of US steel or don't know vice versa later in the fuck area can you we error variance homostatic per up at the end you you many let them a year later on the heterostatic autocorrelation to bottom you are saying that it there is no autocorrelation at the same time you can take that there is autocorrelation and the fourth is the possibility we can think of other permutations and combination of the error term or BSK cage you have a situation so sakti now what is the you can say the cracks of this situation allowing for one or more of these possibilities we have discussed four possibilities if you allow any one of these possibilities then you can say the analysis become more complicated because we you have changed your assumption about the error term and the but you are very lucky that the problem may be alleviated by the REM that is the random effect model. So we have completed our discussion about the fixed effect model. Now we are going towards the random effect model and we see that if we make a different assumption about our uh, error term in the panel data how random effect model is uh, 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 can alleviate this problem. Although straight for so now we have started discussion about this REM random effect model although straightforward to apply fixed effect or you can say the least care dummy very modeling can be expensive in terms of degrees of freedom very simple technique that is the fixed effect model but very expensive not on the money side but on the you can say the analysis that side that it is consuming much of the degree of the uh, freedom if dummy variables do in fact represent a lack of knowledge 
now this is the justification behind using the random effect model and as I said that every time we would have some of the justification. What its propon uh, proponents of random effect model says? They say that if the dummy variable was used for the lack of knowledge that the whether the model is true or not, why not we should uh, use the information about the error term that could tell us the same phenomena that are the dummy variable are telling us. Okay, jo hum dummy variable se kaam rahe hain, why we do not get the uh, express this ignorance through the you can say the disturbance the term that is the UIT. So the difference is that one technique is using dummy variable, the others are saying that dummy variables are showing the lack of knowledge that whether the model is true or not. The random effect uh, uh, model uh, proponent says, the supporter says that we can get this information rather than from uh, changing the dummy variable we can use from the you can say the disturbance term. This is precisely the approach suggested by the proponents of the so called component error correction model. This is also called the error correction model and it is also called the random effect model. So now I will start the you can say its equation. No difference you will see only one difference will here. Yit is the same as the previous one x2it x3it but if you concentrate on this here rather than beta 1 now it is beta 1i you are making it random so we continue and see what is this instead of now what is you can see the mechanism of random effect model instead of treating beta 1i as fixed as we used to uh, uh, suppose in the previous term that was the fixed effect mo model instead of treating beta 1 i as fixed we assume that it is a random variable with a mean value of beta. Now we are making the assumption we say that this is a random variable and its mean is equal to beta and the intercept value for an individual company can be expressed then. Ab har company ki mean value kaise aap show karenge? This is now it is equal to this mean value of the intercept that you have supposed here plus the error term because now we are taking that we want to get information from the random term not we are uh, saying that we will be getting this from other source now what is this the difference of any of the company is this is the average of the random variable now that, that is the beta intercept and this is the ei and i go to 1 to up to n now where EI is a random error term, uh, all the time it is we assume that with a mean value of 0 and variance of sigma square. So we are again making the assumption of that this is normally dif distributed with 0 mean and constant variance. This mean that the four firms included in our sample are, this is very, you can say the interesting, this means that our four firms that were the General Motor, General Electric, you, you can say the, uh, uh, the United States Steels. Now what we are saying that our four companies or you can say the four in uh, the group are, is, are a drawing from a much larger uniforms of such companies and they have a common mean value of the intercept beta. Now we are talking about new ways. We are saying that we have drawn these four companies from a universe of such kind of companies and we say that they have the mean value of beta. The individual difference in the intercept values, the individual difference, the intercept value of each company are reflected in the error term ET. Jo bhi in ka difference aega, for example I, I say I keep the BI in this side, B, B1 is equal to beta 1i minus ei. So now this is the individual difference in the intercept values of each companies are reflected in the error term that is the ei here. So random effect uh, you can say that we are continuing look at this we are just incorporating the previous information into this model here. So what is this if you look at this the model is same but we have replaced this one and it has become EI plus 
u i and we are in the second equation we have done nothing we have given it another name and here what is w i t and you can see it is equal to e i plus u i t as you can see from here we are replacing the, this with that one this was a bit of the mechanics i am going towards the you can say the logic theory or you can say the description the composite error term w i t now our error term is composite and it is a why it is composite this is error term it is a composition of two terms that are already the uh, error terms error consists of two components e i what is e i which is the cross sectional it is uh, you can say this is the cross sectional or individual specific error component and u i t look at this it is not only error term from the cross sectional or time series it is from both because it has the subscript of i as well as you can say the t which is the combined time series and cross sectional error component now a bit time to just concentrate on the formulation of the error term if you see now the error term has become a combination of two terms the e i not e i t e i means that the there a this is from the cross sectional unit and there is a u i t that this error term is from a uh, cross sectional as well as the time series uh, unit and the bo the combination of you can say that uh, the composition of these two is equal to w i t that is now our error term notice care carefully the difference between fixed defect model and the error correction model you can say it that this is the random effect model in fixed defect model you have done a study kiya tha, each cross sectional unit has its own fixed intercept value we uh, used to that each cross sectional unit has its intercept value in all n such values for n cross sectional agar aapki n cross sectional unit honge to in ke n jo hai wo intercept honge i am talking about the fixed defect model what in but what in the random effect model in the random effect model on the other hand the intercept beta 1 represent the mean value of all the cross sectional intercept ab mere khayal mein aap par jo hai wo baat clear ho gayi fixed defect model mein kya tha we were saying that the every form has different intercept it means they are different from here now what we are saying that the every the all the forms had a common intercept and you can say the mean way and it is showing the mean value of intercept and the error component e represent the random deviation of individual intercept from this mean value do not assume that i am saying in the random effect model that there is no difference and in the fixed defect model i am saying that they, there is a difference across the company two techniques only differ from capturing the you can say that their observation in the fixed defect model we uh, fix the intercept and we compare it with other uh, the companies and we take the difference here we are saying that what is why we need for this assume that the intercept is the mean value of all the companies and then uh, bring the information that is the difference now it is in the error term and we say that as we you can see did here that this this is the common and this is intercept plus the ei value of any of the fark however it is necessary to keep in mind that ei is not directly observable it is very difficult for a person to observe ei it is what is known as unobservable or latent variable it is not uh, you can say it is rarely found and we say that it is a latent variable now i am uh, you can say i am concluding the discussion about the random effect model and the fixed effect model being a students i know that you will be now making the question that which model is better as compared to the other because every time you uh, you want to get prepared things and you if i tell you that which is better and which is uh, less important immediately you will be biased towards the better and you will be using that so what is this the answer to this question hangs around the assumption one makes about the likely correlation between the individual 
are cross-sectional specific error component EI and XI regress. So we decide nahi kar sake hum ji which may, uh, random effect is better or the you can say the fixed effect model but we have given and uh, we have put another question that if we, uh, anybody gives us the assumption about this that uh, what he is assuming about the regressor and the error term then we are in a position to tell that which method is better if it is now we are making some of the if it is assumed that the EI and the X size are uncorrelated we say there is no correlation between the regressor and the error time this is the simply you can say the assumption of the uh, the classical linear uh, classical linear regression model ECM may be appropriate ECM random effect model in this situation we say that the random effect model is appropriate whereas if EI and the X size are correlated then fixed effect model may be appropriate so we have taken one of the assumption and we have given our uh, you can say the uh, result we say that if the XI and the error term are correlated uh, if they are uncorrelated then error correction model or the random effect model can perform better but if they are correlated then there is the possibility that the fixed effect model can perform much better as compared to the random effect model. Keeping this fundamental difference in the two approaches in mind, what we can say about the choice between fixed effect model and the random effect model, do not confuse this is error uh, component model, you can say this is also the random effect model. So what is this? We know your limitations and I don't say that on your side there, there is lack of knowledge but we want to give you some specific rule of thumb so that you can make some of the you can say the choice between random effect model and the, uh, the fixed effect model. Look at if T, now T is the time unit. If T the number of time series data is large n of large and n the number of cross-sectional unit is small there is likely to be li little difference in the values of the parameter estimated by fixed effect model and random effect model one problem of your solved so this is you can say a guesswork for you that if you see that the number of time series unit is more and the number of cross-sectional unit is small you can say that either you use random effect model or you use the uh, fixed effect model there will be no difference between the parameters what I am saying that if T is that T is greater than n now T is the time number of time series unit for example if your data is 1950 to 1990 here T will be equal to you can say the 40 observation and n for example if you are talking about the 30s companies so n is the 30 so if n is less than uh, t is less than n uh, t is greater than n t is other hai, then there is no difference between the estimation of the random effect model or you can say the fixed effect model so this is you can say the first thought for you that this is the situation here's the then how to decide? Hence the choice is based on computational convenience. When there are two equal options, then we go that is easy. When they are there, the result of the both the options are uh, equal. For example, if I say that you should uh, solve the factorization that you have uh, you learned in the metric, there are two formulas. One is you can say that we divide the middle term and the other is by formula. So if every time we say that there is no difference, so we try to go it by factorization rather than by the formula. So same situation is here that if n is, uh, t is greater than n, there is no difference between the fixed effect model and the random effect model estimation and now it is up to you that which you are going to choose and uh, definitely you are going to choose that is easy to compute. On this score, 
fixed effect model is preferable. In the computation, uh, computational situation, the fixed effect model is much easier as compared to the random effect. It has, you can say, some involved mathematics or you can say the tough mathematics. When n is large and t is small, now reverse this situation. We say that now n is greater than t. When n is larger and t is small, the estimates obtained by the two methods can differ significantly. Now what is the situation? I say that you have the 50 firms and you have data for these form for only 10 years. So this is t, this is n. If this is the situation, now you should be very careful. Why you should, uh, you should be careful? Because in this situation, there is a huge difference, large difference between if you apply the random effect model or you can apply the, you can say, the fixed effect model. By now, I have not given you that how to apply this and I would like to draw your attention to e-views. When you will be using e-views, you will go for this. You will come to know that there are the option for the fixed effect model and then you will be able to, I think you will be able to just start learning and if you are unable to learn, go for some, you can say the expert person or better is to go for the help. There is everything available for this. If the individual error component correlated, now on the basis of, now we are supposing that n is greater than t. If the individual error component are correlated, then the EC estimates, ECREM, random effect model, EC estimators are biased, whereas those obtained from fixed effect model are unbiased. If there is a correlation in which individual error components a company ke error ki dusri company ke saath correlation hai then the random effect estimators are biased whereas those fixed effect model are unbiased the other is if n is larger and t is small and if the assumption underlying the random effect model hold the random effect models are more efficient than fixed effect model there is another situation if we assume underlying assumption of the random effect model that I have not explained, I have only explained about the error term, then the random effect model can be better than as the fixed effect model. Now this was you can say the theoretical underpinnings that which model is better and which is uh, less important, no model is much better and the other is in different situation, different situation different model perform in a different way. So now I am going to talk, uh, I can say that I am going a bit uh, faster and I may be skipping some of the, uh, you can say the information, but, at, uh, but I can assure you that to up to your requirement, I am giving you the uh, required knowledge. Is there a formal method? You have that that was a bit difficult that now we want that we push the button, the result should be there. So now this is the discussion that is there a formal test that will help us to choose between fixed effect model and the random effect model. Every time I am writing on this, this is also called the least scare dummy variable technique. So this is the situation, in, uh, in this situation, the formal test you can say, kya ko formal test hai jo hume is ke bata sake ke we apply and we say that this is better and this is yes. We are enough lucky that every time what we want, it is available there. Hausman test can serve this job. Hausman has developed a test that can help us in deciding that whether the fixed effect model is better or the random effect model is better. So uh, I am not going to give the formulas and such kind of this for uh, the Hausman test. The null hypothesis in the Hausman test is that the fixed effect and the random effect estimator do not differ substantially. What this assume, what is the assumption of the Hausman test ये कहता है कि आपके fixed effect model से मेजर किए गए estimate और random effect model से मेजर किए गए estimates में कोई difference नहीं है, substantial difference नहीं है, it means they are similar. 
so now we will see uh, look at again the null hypothesis that there is no substantial difference between the parameters when they are estimated either from the fixed effect model or you can say the random effect model now you will see whether we reject or not the test statistic developed by Hasman has asymptotic chi-square distribution it follows the chi-square distribution when we say that this follows you can say the uh, a t distribution chi square distribution it has some specific justification on behind this that is very you can say a irrelevant at this stage not irrelevant to this uh, test but irrelevant to our scenario because we want just its application over time if the null hypothesis is rejected do you know what is the null hypothesis if you know that let me know the null hypothesis was to go difference in English me if you reject then you say that there is a difference of the estimation between the parameter the conclusion is that the error correction uh, error component model is not appropriate and that we may be better off using fixed defect model agar hum reject kar dete hain ki ye 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 equal nahi hai then we say that the fixed defect model is better in which case statistical inference will be conditional on the e in the sample every time we are based on some of the assumption i am not going to you should just remember this situation that if you reject the null hypothesis of the uh, hasman test you can decide that now the estimation of the output is not the same and the fixed effect model is preferable over the uh, random effect model although an improvement over cross sectional data panel data do not provide a cure all for uh, all for all of uh, estimation problem this was my sentence that i used in the beginning of the this lecture what i am saying here although panel data is huge improvement over the previous time series and you can say the cross sectional data but you can't say that this is a treatment of all the problem so this may have some of the problem now we are going towards some another uh, you can say the situation uh, before starting this simultaneous regression model i would like to give you about some of the panel data panel data mein time series aur cross section lakatthe ho jate hain दो मेथड हम यूज करते हैं फिक्स डिफेक्ट मॉडल और रैंडम इफेक्ट मॉडल फिक्स डिफेक्ट मॉडल में हम शुरू तो करते हैं कि एवरीथिंग इज कांस्टेंट देन वी कीप ऑन अलाउइंग एंड वी से दैट सम टाइम इंटरसेप्ट इज चेंजिंग टाइम इज चेंजिंग आर यू कैन से द क्रॉस सेक्शनल यूनिट देन वी यूज द रैंडम इफेक्ट मॉडल एंड वी सेड दैट रेदर देन गोइंग फॉर द डमी वेरिएबल इंटरसेप्ट वी शुड ड्रा दिस इंफॉर्मेशन यू कैन से फ्रॉम द Uh, from the error term and we made many assumption about the error term so this is i am not going to comprehensively explain the simultaneous equation model these are the dynamics model you can say these are the advanced categories but i will just give you a very small flavor of this so that you could uh, get a taste because if this is the situation a new situation or you can say the new pandora box opens and you face new of the problem you just know that if this is the situation you should think that now that the previous techniques have become a bit you can say the difficult by now we were concerned about exclusively with single equation model aapko yaad hoga ki jab bhi maine baat ki maine ek hi is tarah ki equation likhi y t is equal to beta 1 plus beta 2 x 2 plus beta 3 x 3 plus u t this was one of the equation the other equation were the derivation of this otherwise these were not some different equation sometime we were changing uh, you can say the taking the difference of the variable sometime we were using this and that but what this model assume this model assume that the causation is from independent variable to dependent variable कि हमारे जो एक्स वेरिएबल हैं वो इफेक्ट कर रहे हैं वाई वेरिएबल को एंड वी एज्यूम इन दिस सिचुएशन इन वन रिग्रेशन मॉडल दैट देयर इज ओनली यूनिडायरेक्शनल वन वे ट्रैफिक यूनिडायरेक्शनल रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन दिस सिचुएशन बट इन मेनी सिचुएशन सच ए वन वे आर यूनिडायरेक्शनल कॉज एंड इफेक्ट 
relationship is not meaningful many of the time it is meaningful but in many of the time at the same time it is not a uh, meaningful so what this means we can't say that only x will affect y we may say that the y can also affect the x so if this is the situation we require more than one of the equation i will be talking about this this situation appears if y is determined by the x size ye to determine ho raha hai ji yahan se pehli equation mein if y is determined by xi and sum of the x x is in term are determined by y now there is a vice versa situation you can say the two way situation in, in this situation and what this means that by now previously we assumed that only the traffic is from right hand to the left hand variable from independent variable to you can say the dependent variable but here i am saying that no it is not necessarily true that every time our independent variable influence y but there is the possibility and it is quite you can say the possible that the sum of the x is not necessarily all sum of the x is are being determined by the y then what is the situation x y ko effect kar raha hai y a, x ko kar raha hai so in this way in the previous situation was this that x was affecting our y y was dependent variable x was independent now this situation in this way x is affecting y and on the same time y is affecting x so this is the situation so what if this is the situation what will happen in short i can say there is a two way or simultaneous relationship between y and sum of the axes so in technical term i can say that there is now a two way relationship between the variable which makes the distinction between dependent and explanatory variable of ws value ab hame koi pata nahi ji ki dependent kaun hai now there is you can say the a new problem that in the by now previously we were well aware of that this is the dependent variable and these variables are affecting this value but here what is happening here we say no now we are unable whether y is the dependent variable or the x is because y is being influenced by x and on the same time x is are being influenced by y so to decide that which is uh, the dependent variable or which is the independent it becomes a bit critical in simultaneous equation model there is more than one equation because if y is depending upon x definitely now x will be def depending upon now i am supposing b, uh, this is alpha 1 plus alpha 2 plus alpha 3 alpha 2 x uh, you can say y 2 y alpha 3 x 3 and so on so if this is the situation now there uh, in simultaneous equation model we need more equation as compared to this one one for each the mutually or jointly dependent or endogenous variable now the variables are not you can say we need one equation for each endogenous variable endogenous variables are those variable whose values are determined within from within the model and the exogenous are the predetermined uh, variables are those whose values are determined outside the model they are predetermined whatsoever the situation of the model their values will not be you can say determined by the model what happens our issue is not to just introduce that the this is the simultaneous regression model our issue is that what happens if the parameters of each equation ab do equation aa gaye hum suppose karte hain there are two uh, endogenous variable and there are two equation and if we run the ols as we know how to run this we run ols on both the regression and uh, both the equation one by one, one what will happen we disregard other equation in the system humne ye ek equation ko liya ye nahi dekha ki ye isme koi variable kahin aur se bhi determined ho raha hai we did and what we did we said okay we applied the ols on the first regression without ignoring uh, with ignoring everything uh, about the model again what will happen one of the crucial assumption of the method of ols is that the explanatory x variables are non stochastic our model was that the uh, independent variable should be fixed now they are not fixed they have become stochastic because they are being determined by some of the other variable 
if this condition is not met ye hamara assumption pura nahi ho raha the least square uh, estimates are not only biased but also inconsistent lo ji another problem arrived not worry about this not we are going to detect the problem of this not we are going to have some of the remedial measure not we are going to tell that why it is, why it is there our only purpose is to tell you that when there is simultaneous equal equation model if you will apply ols on one equation disregarding the other equation then the ols estimator will not only be biased but they will be inconsistent over time i am not going to tell you what is biased and what is inconsistent i have explained it a number of times in the previous discussion as the sample size increases indefinitely the estimators do not convert to their true value this is the inconsistency that ke aap sample size ko badhate bhi chale jayenge your model will not your parameter will not convert towards the true so here is only two things to remember one is that now the depend there is a problem of to choose which is the dependent variable and which is the independent variable the both there are two variable that are determined by each other there is now two way traffic two way causality uh, uh, you can say the causation x determines y and on the other side uh, uh, y also has effect on the x i can say the x is being determined the other is that we should avoid ols estimation in this situation and because if we apply ols the our parameters will be you uh, unbiased uh, as well as inconsistent very simple example uh, example for the you can say the simultaneous regression model what is this look at this this is the market market there is a demand function and demand look at this it is a function of pt and i have written it with this sign this may have it surely it has negative sign but just doing it mathematically i have taken it as you can say plus sign what uh, and there is a supply demand and supply are the forces that are operating in the market so now we will see that either they are independent of each other or they are being determined by one another so look at this the, this is the quantity supply this is equation 1 this is 2 and look at this market forces says that the market is equal in equilibrium when quantity demanded is equal to quantity supply so what is this a shift in the demand curve changes both p and q सिर्फ आप ए को जो है वो चेंज करते हैं द रिजल्ट इज दैट द पी एंड क्यू बिकम्स चेंज लुक एट द ग्राफ ऑफ दिस दिस इज द प्राइस दिस इज द क्वांटिटी सप्लाई एज वेल एज क्वांटिटी डिमांड लुक एट दिस दिस इज आवर सप्लाई कर दिस इज आवर डिमांड कर सप्लाई एंड डिमांड सप्लाई मीन्स देयर इज ए पॉजिटिव रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन प्राइस एंड सप्लाई and d means there is a negative relationship between price and demand this is this is p star i will call it that the equilibrium price and this is you can say the q star this is the equilibrium quantity at this price p star the market is uh, clear because quantity supply is equal to quantity demand in other wise uh, other wise i say that the people how much want to buy is available in the market and the same amount the seller are willing to sell now how i have to show that if i change only one equation it affects both price and demand look at this i say that due to any reason there is a shift in demand demand increases i call that this is d1 now new equilibrium is at this side this was you can say e and this is e1 this is e. if i bring it at here it will become p star 1 and it will become q star 1 now look at this i have changed only one function and the price and quantity has been uh, changed that was determined by the uh, supply and demand 
so it means that there is interrelationship and interdependence uh, between the variable so these are the simultaneous equation model that is the market equilibrium model you can say it uh, you uh, it is the quantity demanded is a function of something and the quantity supply is also therefore a regression of q on p would violate an important assumption of the classical linear regression model namely the assumption of no correlation between the explanatory variable and the disturbance term you can see that here what is happening here i say that therefore a regression of q on p ye dekhen q on p agar aap ye run kar dete hain it will be violate an important assumption which is the important assumption of the classical linear regression model what was that that there is no correlation between the explanatory variable and the disturbance term now the disturbance terms have become correlated you can say uh, correlated with your uh, the explanatory variable so when the one of the assumption is left left definitely we will be talking about that there is a problem and we can't use this kind of estimation in this situation the ne uh, next is i think i uh, would like to have the summary of uh, this lec uh, this lecture and rather than going for the summary i think i should give you a small uh, uh, the introduction of this that we will now this you can say this is a totally different from the previous things jark bera test this was de uh, developed by the jark and the bera and this is a test of normality very important tends it will show that whether you are residual your error terms is normal uh, are uh, normally distributed or they are abnormal or you can say they have they have some systematic trend so jark bera test is it, it is a bit uh, lengthy just let me explain in the next lecture i will be starting from here just let me tell again that it is a test of normality because every time the simplest way i would like to uh, tell in one sentence that whenever you run the regression at the end you get the residual and plot it on uh, the gr uh, graph and you say see that this is these are randomly scattered for this your error term is this is this kind of you will say that these are normally distributed so when this is the situation we have a formal test that is the jark bera test we can apply this test on the uh, you can say the to know the uh, normality and we will continue discussion about this now i would like to have to go through a quick and smart summary of about the panel data and the simultaneous regression model because the our new discussion is a bit you can say i have in the ne for the next and the final lecture i have picked some of the missing points that i kept on repeating that i will lash back out uh, out on these and now i in the next lecture i will be fulfilling my promise and i will be telling you that what is the situation uh what is the importance of this and i it is uh, i think it will it is happiness for you that i will be uh, going through the whole summary of the previous 31 lecture in the next at the end of the next lecture so what we have concluded today we started from the panel data keep in mind simply speaking now it will become as you can say the over emphasized over repetition simply there are three major kinds of data the time series data the cross sectional data and when we pool these data it becomes panel data panel data is a remedy for many of the problem but at the same time you can't say that it is a panacea for all the problems of the estimator estimation it captures many of the uh, uh, it uh, uh, controls many of the problem and it is very useful why it is used for because not it is including the information from the cross sectional unit it is capturing the information from the time series unit so the uh, the other benefit for this is by using the panel data we can you uh, uh, we can estimate uh, the more complicated phenomena that are not possible in the other categories of the time series or you can say the cross sectional data the other reason for this is that it enlarges the data 
when you combine the cross sectional unit with the time series unit it enlarges it increases the number of observation and you know uh, the results become more reliable as the number of units increases so the panel data the estimation of the panel data is based on two major techniques that were the fixed effect model and the random effect model in the summary let me clear again that the fixed effect model is also called the least scare dummy variable and the random effect model is also called the error component model so i have used these name uh, interchangeably you should not uh, i think worry about this in the in the, in the fixed effect model as its na name shows that we are putting restriction on our parameter we have uh, slope coefficient and the intercept i will not be going into the detail i am just telling sometimes we are saying that intercept is only changing sometimes we are saying that the slope coefficient is changing sometimes we are saying the vice versa and interestingly there is some situation in which we say that the everything is changing we are putting no in uh, no restriction on this then after the fixed effect model there was the random effect model very interesting technique and the uh, supporter of the random effect model says that rather than uh, the getting the information uh, that the dummy variable we use the lack of information about the true ma uh, variable why not we should get this information from the random effect model so they just the difference between this is that in the fixed effect model we keep the intercept fixed but in the random effect model we take that this is the mean value of all the companies all the companies saying uh, that because i have explained some of the example from all the companies so as we say that now the intercept is the mean value of the uh, you can say the company so now how to measure the difference the difference between this is that we take this intercept that is now the intercept of the random effect model and we add the error term it into it and this gives us the difference because now we are capturing the information from the error term we made many assumption about the error term and you should keep in mind that the assumptions are very uh, important because as you make different assumption different techniques becomes candidate for the estimation the other was that how to decide that which met method is better the fixed effect or the random effect simply speaking we say that when the time series units are greater than the fix uh, the cross sectional unit there is no difference between the a uh, fixed effect model and the random effect model but if the situation reverses then we put some of the assumption and we say that in some cases the fixed effect model is there uh, on the other hand i would like to say that the fixed effect model the computation of the fixed effect model is much easier as compared to ra random effect model so if there is equal chance for you to either select a, a random or the fixed you should go for the fixed effect model then i just gave you a very you can say the small flavor as flavor of the simultaneous equation model very lengthy very uh, you can say large topic and you can say but i gave you only just one thing that you should not just every time assume that uh, the causation is running from one way to other in the last 30 lecture or even 30 and half of the previous uh, this lecture we talked about only one equation model and we just suppose that the uh, causation is running from the independent variable towards the dependent variable but the situation may be different that there may be inter causation that uh, the x is uh, affecting y and y is affecting x in this such situation if you run the ols regression separately on and the equation disregarding the other then there may be the problem of biasness and inconsistency of the parameter and the you, uh, you will see that the very good example that how the interdependence exists is the market e equilibrium model in which the two forces the quantity demand or you can say the quantity supply these are based on some of the interaction and if only one uh, thing changes the other also it affects all the other dependent variable so just giving you one suggestion that in uh, if there are uh, two endogenous variable you require 
two uh, equation to estimate this so in the next lecture we will be talking about some of the specific things then there will be summary so till that uh, next lecture uh, 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 be happy goodbye and allah hafiz